Yogendra ji, you were a professor, then you were a sophologist, today you are a politician. So, how did you become a professor and politician? <laughs> the question should be, how did you become a professor? That's right. That's wrong, it seems to be a politician. It's not wrong. Uh, you know, I always wanted to be in public life. I wanted to do politics. Uh, from my university days, I saw, I, you know, I was in a student organization called uh, Samta Yogjan Sabha, mm. uh, which was in JNU, uh, which was because everyone was left, but this was the democratic socialist left, mm. uh, opposed to the communist left in those days. And I saw some of my friends uh, go to villages. Uh, one of my seniors, Sunil, uh, went from JNU. In fact, he, he, was, he had extraordinary scores, beaten only by Abhijit Banerjee later. Mm. Uh, he went to uh, this uh, tribal village in Madhya Pradesh and stayed there for the rest of his life. Uh, these were my ideals and I wanted to do that. I uh, wanted to be in public life, wanted to go back to my village, do that. But isn't but it strange managed. to have had the training to dispassionately analyze politics, which you have done for many years, to look at trends, to look at who is winning, who is losing, and why, and then suddenly have to pick a side in that. Did that alter your capacity or your training to look at uh, politics as objectively? No, because, uh, you know, in politics, I was trained by Kishan Ji, Kishan Patnaik. Uh, and he taught me that there was absolutely no contradiction between being truthful and between uh, taking sides because you were on the side of the truth mm -hmm. and you had capacity. You know, I was uh, from my university days for almost 20 years, I was kind of understudy, mm -hmm. you know, Mundo would be mm -hmm. around Kishanji. Mm -hmm. And uh, so those 20 years and he was in public life. He was a member of parliament when he was 20, 27 years, 30 year old. And uh, so I was with him for 20 years almost. Never saw him lie even once. That you could combine public life, political life with truthfulness is something I learned from it. I can't say I practiced it fully, but I tried. So for me, there's no, there's no contradiction necessarily between these two things. But you know, those say there's a certain impression one has about politics. Uh, now that you are in politics, is there something you've had to unlearn? Kuch hota hai na ki apni soch leke, jise feminist movement pe ham kehte hai ki bhai 18 saal ki umar me ham aise sochte the, aaj ham 50 saal ki umar me kuch aur sochte hai. So now that you're actively in politics, is there something you've had to unlearn, leave behind? Unlearn much of my political science. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, political science doesn't teach you much about politics. Kehne ko log bahar se kehte hai, election expert hai. I mean, I, I, you know, this is this is almost like uh, picking a good economist from Delhi hmm. and saying, "Kya chaki stock mein paisa lagaye?" Hmm. I mean, the person would obviously give you a wrong advice hmm. uh, because you know these are two entirely different things. So, ye kehna election expertise that I had hmm. and the actual ground level elections that I see are two different worlds. So I had to learn from ABC partly because much of our expertise was in macro post mortem. Yeah. And this is micro and this is uh, this is something you have to plan for future. What to do is something that, uh, you know, I had to learn completely anew. From and scratch. I don't think from scratch and I don't think I've learned it very well. We'll come to that. But uh, first of all, you know, before this conversation, I was reading about you. And I thought that I was more than you about it. And I was surprised to find a story I did not know. And that story was that when you were a small child, your father gave you the name Salim. And one of your sisters is, is still called colloquially Gharpe, not officially Najma. Am I right? Uh, yeah, part of the story is right. What's the story behind this? <laughs> I know that you have to ask a lot of people, but now many people don't know. The truth is that I am a little bit, you know, such is the power of social media trolling that I have started now feeling almost awkward about this but question. But you should not. It's your life. That's, that, you know, this, I, I, if anything, there's something to feel proud of. Uh, but uh, this is the strange thing, uh, you know, just last night, one of my cousins sent me a WhatsApp. Hmm. Uh, he's in Bits Bilani group. So he was from Bits Bilani. And he said, uh, look, this was coming on my WhatsApp group. 
कि योगेंद्र यादव का नाम सलीम है नहीं नहीं कि बंदा है सलीम इसने झूठे से लोगों को मुसलमान सलीम है इसने छुपाने के लिए अपना नाम योगेंद्र यादव किया है इट इज लाइक यूसुफ खान कॉलिंग हिमसेफ दिलीप कुमार दिस वॉज ऑन द व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप ऑफ बिट्स पिलानी सो इस चीजों से अब मेरे को थोड़ा वो लगने लगा द स्टोरी इज वेरी सिंपल आई टोल्ड इट सेवरल टाइम्स पर आपको लगना नहीं चाहिए बिफोर यू टेल द स्टोरी ये आपकी जिंदगी है आप अपने जिंदगी के कुछ हिस्से लोगों के सामने ना रखें क्योंकि वो डिस्टॉर्ट हो सकते हैं बाय ट्रोल्स दैट शुड नॉट बी वेयर वी आर मगर दैट्स वेयर वी आर इन दिस कंट्री आंट वी मतलब कोई और देश होता तो इस पे शायद फिल्म बनती इस कहानी मेरे पे नहीं आई एम एब्सोल्युटली इंसिडेंट टू कैरेक्टर मुझे कहानी बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग लगी आई एम अ प्रॉप इन दैट स्टोरी आई एम नोबडी इन दैट स्टोरी टेल अस द स्टोरी एंड देन वी कैन टॉक अबाउट अदर थिंग्स नो दिस इज स्टोरी अबाउट माय ग्रैंडफादर इन 1939 ही वाज इन हिसार व्हिच वाज देन इन पंजाब एंड दिस वाज द टाइम ऑफ कम्युनल राइट्स सो देयर वाज सम इंसिडेंट दैट हैपेंड द डे बिफोर एंड अलेजेडली सम ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम हिज स्कूल वर इन्वॉल्वड इन डेसिक्रेशन ऑफ अ मॉस्क सो द mob a muslim mob came to the school next day he was my grandfather was the warden ram singh ji uh, they came and demanded those boys he said no i am their guardian now uh they said nahi to tumhara gala kaatenge he said fine let it be me first it has to be me first and they actually gandase se unka sar kaat diya wahi pe of your grandfather my grandfather ram singh ji and your father witnessed my this? father was 8 year old he witnessed it you know and then and uh, so you would normally expect hatred from muslims ye wo but you know this is he, he was uh, he was very deeply influenced by gandhi ji and he decided uh, so in 1952 when they married my father and my father he said bas ek baat hai jo bacche honge na unko muslim naam dunga so my mother accepted what choice did she have in those days uh 57 my eldest sister was born she was named nazma she is not called nazma today she is dr neelam yadav okay. uh my mother said wo sab theek hai ladki ke sath mat karo shaadi nahi hogi beti ki jab ladka hoga na jo marzi kar lena hmm. so that was the compact then the next sister was born to nam and then when i was born i was given the name salim this was not my nickname this was my name that i carried to the school so you were salim yadav no just salim just salim ha i you know i just you know because i went to school very early i was hardly 3 and a half when i went to school with my sisters and one year a few months i can't even say whether one year or few months everyone would ask me tum salim kaise ho and mind you this this was a town where there was not a single muslim family this was a you know rajasthan ganganagar mm. half punjabi half bagri and they would say acha tum salim kaise ho um jaise tum rajesh ho jaise tum sanjay ho waise main salim hu and then they would say nahi nahi apne matlab tumhare parents ke bachche nahi ho god liye ho kya sadak se uthaya tha kya nali se uthaya tha kya and i would come back home and say ki dekho kisi bachche se naam pe sawal nahi puchte mere se puchte hain and my father would explain what would i understand these things he actually took me to a mosque Uh, and in that town there was not a single muslim family left after partition so that was so haunted that i came back even more frightened mm. uh and i said kuch gabad hai isme matlab you know and after a few months i said ya to mera naam badal do nahi to main school nahi jaunga so they said theek hai beta kar lo so parchi dali and they said tum batao naam kya hona chahiye i said aise thodi hota hai mummy papa naam dete hain so parchi dal di it was yogendra so agle din se main technically yogin ban gaya but the funny thing is that nothing changed my trolling in the school stopped mm-hmm. i became yogin but for all my friends all my family friends my village my family i was and i remain salim even so today till recently yeah 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 even today if i get a you know call from someone says slim <laughs> i i know it's ganganagar and someone you know someone very close to me is calling me do you think of yourself family, as slim or yogendra we all live with so many double identities yeah, different identities you know so uh, for my parents for for my wife for my sisters uh, my parents till they passed away i was slim now the thing is that you know in any other country as i said i'm just a prop in that story it's not about me 
it's about partly about my grandfather but more about my father you know who thought main wahi puchna cha rahi thi that normally if a child watches his father being killed by a muslim mob to ek bitterness aati ek gussa aata um ek cynicism aata and we saw this you know i'm i'm from a partition family and i've seen some of these struggles why did your father find healing in giving his some healing he must have found yes. in giving his children muslim names but you know he was a very i mean you know my father was he's no more now he was a very reticent person wouldn't speak very much uh, he would write wouldn't speak very much <coughs> and uh, certainly not speak about himself uh he was kind of a saintly kind of you know uh com- non religious but very spiritual uh so he wouldn't speak but i think uh, two or three things he mentioned occasionally one he said that you know he told us that he witnessed partition violence as well mm. and in partition muslims were just butchered in my area you know this was this massacre of muslims in this rewadi mahendragarh belt where we we came from so probably he saw the other side as well um and uh, probably this was his way of uh telling himself i would not allow hatred to conquer me uh probably it was gandhi he was deeply influenced by gandhi ji um probably it was that uh but yes right till the end of his life so it was not just that naming uh in everything you know in 1914 uh 2014 after um no 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 after 2014 yeah just before 2019 he wrote a letter to prime minister Achha. and said uh, tum isko kar dena uh, which was to say you are a good prime minister you are doing good things for the country it's fine but uh, what you are doing in kashmir is not good what you are doing to muslims is not good this is uh, these are not good things for the country in the long run please remember being prime minister is a great responsibility uh, so he was not was it a... this or something he he was not he, he could see shades of gray Yeah, yeah, yeah. He saw, uh, he saw uh, virtue in any opponent. Um, in fact, uh, you know, I was young. I started debating, and uh, I came back home, and uh, you know, he said, "I said, what did you debate? Bola tha sab. Acha kya ab batao? So now." And he twice this kind of thing happened. Once he asked me, "Acha, uh, do you believe in what you are saying?" I said नहीं जी वो टीचर ने बोला था कि इसके मोशन के अगेंस्ट में बोलना है मैंने बोल दिया अभी ऑल ऑफ़ अस डिड दैट इन द स्कूल सो ही सेड आई कैन सी फ्रॉम योर आईज़ दैट यू डोंट बिलीव इन व्हाट यू आर सेइंग नेवर डू दैट आई सेड जी वो फिर टीम में कैसे जाऊँगा ही सेड डोंट गो इट्स ऑल राइट यू वोंट विन you know he i he heard one of my debate things and he said so you think your opponent have uh, nothing sensible to say i said no no they, they do have some sensible points he said what are those i said 1 2 3 he said but why don't you say that i said you know i'm speaking for the motion how can i begin by saying that you know my opponents have very sensible mm-hmm. points he said but try why not but do you think by conceding those three points your case is demolished I said no. Actually, I do. I don't think it's demolished. I think they have three sensible points, but they're outweighed by the following things. He said, "Why don't you say that? That my opponents have these three sensible things, but they're outweighed by other things. Isn't that what you believe in?" I said, "Yes." He said, "Just go and say that." You know. I see the reflection of some of that open-mindedness in in your writings, and one of your um, pieces that particularly stays with me is. how you said there is a gap in the liberal conscience you wrote this piece for the print and aapne kaha ki national security ke jab mudde aate hain to liberals and left ya left liberal as the phrase is colloquially used i'm summarizing here but you don't have a language that space has today been politically appropriated completely by the right wing ye ye kyu hua because in in my opinion this is perhaps a big weakness in the opposition narrative as it tries to take on the modi government which makes you all disconnected at a very sentimental and very basic level 
विद अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल जो इसको पोलिटिकली नहीं देखते उनको लगता है कि हम भारतीय हैं हमें प्राइड है वी आर प्राउड इंडियंस एंड हम हमारे जो देश की प्राइड को या इज्जत को डिफेंड करेंगे हम उनके आभारी हैं वाई इज दिस लैंग्वेज मिसिंग इन द ऑपोजिशन काउंटर नैरेटिव बट यू नो एवर सिंस नाइनटीन नाइनटी टू दैट इज ऑफ बाबरी मस्जिद आई बिन थिंकिंग अबाउट वट्स रॉन्ग विद आस Mm-hmm. Uh, we spend a lot of time in saying what's wrong with them. Of course, we have to say that because the, the direction in which BJP RS is taking this country is absolutely dangerous. It's destructive. But we must, when we say this, there are three fingers that point to me. What is wrong with us? And I think what is wrong with us is that we—that is to say, liberal, progressive, mm-hmm. modern, or whatever call it by any name, left, liberal—all these are very odd names. But whatever. the problem with us is that we are. disconnected with uh the language of the people the sentiments of the people and we actually do not have uh responses to some very genuine questions national security was one of those examples aapne kaha ki wo bjp national security ki baat karti hai aur hum human rights ki baat karte hain ye binary kaise hui ha so national security is only one example of that uh, i used to joke with my friends that you know this applies to so many things i used to joke that you see we all believe that it's manmohan singh's job to earn for the country and my job to spend it mm-hmm. you can't have that division you yeah. can't have lal krishna advani looking after national borders and me looking after human rights right. we have to look at both right. for me i'm not saying uh, forget human rights and mm-hmm. all i'm saying is that if you are truly if you truly care for the country uh then you would look at both these things mm-hmm. and a large i mean if you look at say someone like jawaharlal nehru he would be you can fault him for one position or the other but he wouldn't say i'm only about human rights uh you have or indira look, gandhi or indira gandhi you have to look at both things yeah? uh i think it's part of a larger failure and the larger failure is this that uh, the three most precious uh resources that we have for politics we've gifted it away to bjp rss nationalism religion including hindu religion and cultural heritage tradition all these three things we because of our neglect because of our contempt because of our ignorance we've just unki thali mein rakh diya hai aur ab hum keh rahe hai hi mere paas kuch nahi are are ye kya kar rahe hain are humne hi to kiya tha and therefore a politics uh, of future will have to be a politics that reclaims these resources nationalism is mine bjp rss have zero contribution to india's freedom struggle or to indian nationalism my cultural heritage is deep plural diverse something anyone anywhere in the world should be proud of my language is beautiful why don't i own it my uh my hinduism is not merely something to feel ashamed of hinduism is something to be proud of as well like any other religion there is so much that's just nonsense and there's so much to be to take pride in why can't we relate to this so that's i think is a truly a failure failure which comes from a much deeper colonial encounter i must say main wohi puchne wali thi that ye deracination hua kaise 19th century onwards you can see these two reactions to the colonial encounter on the one hand there is a sense of deep inferiority complex mm-hmm. which takes two forms the sense of deep inferior you encounter the british like english they come with initially you see in the early encounters indians didn't think much of the english they thought they were dirty mm-hmm. honestly that's the early encounter they thought they were dirty they were uncivilized and so on but once the english come with colonial power money guns colonial power then the f- impact is a sense of deep sense of cultural inferiority which produces two two things which are mirror images of each other mm. one is a sense of shame and disowning of my own culture everything is wrong with my culture christianity is great europeans are great they have science they have religion they have ethics they have norms they have etiquette we have not 
द सेकेंड इज मेरा भारत महान विश्व गुरु एवरीथिंग इज राइट विद लिटिल माइनर प्रॉब्लम ऑफ द लास्ट वन थाउजेंड ईयर्स बट यू नो एवरीथिंग इज फाइन विद माई कंट्री नाउ बोथ ऑफ दीज आर ओरिजिनेटिंग फ्रॉम ए डीप सेंस ऑफ कल्चरल इन्फीरियोरिटी एंड इट्स ओनली थ्रू गांधी एंड टैगोर दैट वी रिकवर दैट ए जेन्यून सेंस ऑफ सेल्फ दे आर एट ईज विद इट ईज विद बींग इंडियंस रिकवरी ऑफ द सेल्फ begins there and unfortunately the politics that still dominates this country is a politics that comes from both these reactions what is called liberal progressive camp still contains a residue of that sense of shame about being indian and what is called this nationalist sangha parivar camp has this idiotic uh you know Uh, superiority complex which is only trying to very desperately hide a sense of inferiority and shame what we need is a third kind of politics uh, which builds on a sense of being at ease with the world mm. let me give you an example of a nationalist institute that i think does pluralism very well and that is the indian army and I had no military background till I started reporting on the military. और फिर हमने देखा कि मंदिर मस्जिद गुरुद्वारा का ट्रेडिशन है आर्मी यूनिट्स में सर्वधर्म स्थल के ट्रेडिशन है आर्मी यूनिट्स में आपके कमांडिंग ऑफिसर अगर हिंदू हैं लेकिन ट्रूप्स मुस्लिम हैं तो वो नमाज भी लीड करेंगे आपके कमांडिंग ऑफिसर मुसलमान हैं लेकिन ट्रूप्स अगर ज़्यादातर हिंदू हैं तो वो आरती भी परफॉर्म करेंगे दिस actually is not tolerance it is participation in each other's faiths it is what gandhi's model of secularism was ye hum log isko tolerance a media used to frame this as a tolerance debate the word tolerance is a bad word you're not supposed to tolerate each other you're supposed to celebrate each other sarva dharma samabhav i quite like that uh, uh, old gandhian phrase or the rajiv bhargav has a better technical name for that principal distance hmm. uh, but sarva dharma samabhav is still the best name for it sab ke liye samabhav ho hmm. sab se sikhenge are main koi arji de ke hindu hindu paida hua tha kya hmm. koi application de ke sikh paida hota hai kya bolte hain jahan hai usme kuch bahut sundar hai aur jo samne hai usme bhi kuch acha hai le lo usse सबको बराबर देख सको दिस इज आर कल्चरल हेरिटेज सो यूरोपियन डिबेट्स ऑन सेकुलरिज्म डोंट इवन बिगिन टू कैप्चर व्हाट आर चैलेंजेस एंड व्हाट आर रिस्पांस शुड बी वी कैन नॉट बी फ्रेंच स्टाइल सेकुलर्स वी मस्ट नॉट बी करेक्ट वी कैन नॉट बी तुर्की स्टाइल सेकुलरिज्म दैट कोलैप्स फाइनली यू नो आवर सेकुलरिज्म हैज टू बी ऑफ अ वेरी डिफरेंट काइंड इक्वल रिस्पेक्ट at in official things equal distance and if necessary equal intervention to be able to say you shall have to give entry in the temples you know that's intervention but as long as it's equal do it so i think that's our secularism tolerance is not enough deep respect equal respect and in formal things equal distance that's what you need mm. Let's talk a little bit about your journey in politics. आपने कहा कि पोलिटिकल साइंस ने मुझे कुछ नहीं सिखाया मुझे आया टू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम जीरो टिल नाउ वॉट इज बीन योर बिगेस्ट पोलिटिकल मिस्टेक Sometimes I feel coming into politics itself, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't regret it one bit. I mean, I don't want to go back to academia. Uh, mistakes. I think during the Aam Aadmi Party episode. Uh, we were naive. Ah, but we said party. Se pehle there was the Anna movement. Ah, huh, but you see, unlike many other colleagues, uh, you would remember that I was actually never part of the right. core committee of Anna That's movement right. and so on. I was an outsider who was lending support and sympathy. Uh, I was never of the decision making or anywhere close to decision making. So I can't claim to take either credit or blame for okay. much of that. Okay. Uh, when Aam Aadmi Party was formed, I think it had enormous possibilities, and uh, uh, we went in there very naive. naive in the sense that all of us are participating in this grand unique experiment everyone brings the best intentions and let's work as team and i'm by by temperament i'm a team player mm. you know i tend to trust my team persons mm. and sort of work with them together um 
And when the party was being captured, uh, we didn't realize that it was being captured. Captured by? Uh, captured by Arvind and uh, the coterie around him. Um, and we didn't realize that this is what was happening. We didn't take, uh, when we realized, we didn't take enough steps, measures, uh, and uh, could not prevent it. So the problem is not that we were exited, we were thrown out. That's all right, you know, this happens in all kinds of movements and you shouldn't judge a movement or a big event only by what it does to you. Yeah. You are a side player, as I said, a prop, not the hero of the story. But uh, what it did was that it killed a dream. We allowed a dream to be killed. I don't know if we alone had the capacity to protect it, to promote it, to defend it. Uh, but I do take that, I carry that guilt that, you know, we allowed that to happen. Unlike many what other would you have done differently? Mm, very actively brought together a very idealist youth who had joined this movement into some kind of a group, a pressure group within the party, which would keep the party on the on its toes, uh, not allow it to be captured. And when these things started happening, you know, giving tickets to all kinds of people, which had uh, started in 2015, we could not notice. See, for all our claims of, that's why I'm saying political science is not very helpful mm -hmm. for all the claims of understanding political science and politics. The real game of politics that was being played, Arvind was infinitely smarter than we were. Uh, his capacity to manipulate things, to play those political games was infinitely superior. And it took us time even to realize that this was happening to us. Uh, so it started in 2013 itself. By 15, when all this was starting, we still did not try, you know, uh, Prashant and I would converse with each other every day and say, kya ho raha hai? Jiske khilaaf humne FIR kiya tha 2013 mein. Us property hai, unaccounted, benami. Usko ticket de rahe hai, so we would say, but you know, our sense was, no, we are within a party. Party ke andar li karenge, complain karenge. Waha pe, humare Admiral Ramdas the, unko hum shikayat karenge. Magar, uske baare mein mobilize karna, party mein opinions ko mobilize karna, aur ek ye pressure banai rakhna, ye karna chahiye tha. Hum nahi kar paaye. And by the time, so our, you know, we were naive enough to believe that let 2015 happen. Uh, elections and I would always tell Prashanti, Prashanti, abhi kuch mat karo. Mm. 15 mein ek baar jitenge, kyunki Amit Shah ko koi walkover hume, gift handover nahi karna hai. Mm. Jitenge, phir party mein discuss karenge. Little did we know that uh, after the victory, second day, we would be told, ya to mu band kar lo, prize mil jayega, nahi to out. So, uh, we were, so I, I do feel that was uh, very poorly handled. And I feel by, who? by by me. I mean, I hold myself responsible. Absolutely. Uh, because, not because of what it did to me. I think I'm happier not being there. And you the said a dream I, was killed. Yeah. To dream kya thi? Do you think ki dream naive, arguing from the Amadmi party's perspective for a moment, kya unko bhi seekhna pada ki wo jo sapna leke aaye the, Wo shayad aaj ki rajniti ya kabhi bhi ki rajniti mein, wo, it was an unimplementable dream. Is that what happened? Or when you say a dream was killed, you think the party was, you didn't stay there to fight for the party? No, no. When I say the dream, a dream was killed, which is key, well, that was one of those rare moments that thousands of people came to politics. Those who never thought they would have anything to do with politics, yes. they came to politics. These are beautiful moments in any country's history that you bring that fresh energy, fresh talent, you expand. Uh, and most of them, when they meet me, Sir, pata nahi kya tha, hum pata nahi kya soch ke gaye the, bevkuf the na, sir, hum. Mm. And I feel, I feel it's, it's directed at me. I made them feel stupid, you know. Ye kehna, you see, in the last instance, all revolutionary movements become pragmatic. It's just that they take some take 20 years, some mm. take 50 years, and some take 20 months. 
the problem with Amadmi Party, I think, was that in the leadership, the willingness to give up the dreams and ideals was there from day one. And which is to say there wasn't enough seriousness about this. You struggle, you try your best, and then you say, okay, it's not to compromise karna padega. Hmm. But uh, which is different from, I mean, the, the long run left parties, revolutionary parties, they all compromised. But they did some really great and beautiful things before they did so. Hmm. Uh, in the Ahmadmi party, unfortunately, the the tendency which believed ke sab chalta hai yaar, ho gaya na movement vagra khatam ho gaya, party hai party ki tarah se raho. Aur sab chalta hai, thik hai, jada don't, don't be, abne, you know, don't ride your high horses. Or ye. That tendency dominated right from the beginning. Aur uski wajay se ye jo ek khubsurat cheez ho sakti thi, wo nahi ho pa, ye nahi pa, ye hold myself rest. You have likened in uh, other statements and other interviews, Arvind Kejriwal to being a version or a mini version of Prime Minister Modi. Rhetorically, theek hai, but do you mean that? I normally don't use rhetoric. What do you mean by this comparison? Uh, in some respects, there are many commonalities. You can see it, you can see it, you can see it. Uh, but what I don't want to do, Barkha, is that uh, you know, the kiss and tell style of life, I don't want to live in my life. You have to live with someone. And after that, all your life, you have to die. I mean, someone has a pocket in your day. At night, you will have to feel bad. There was a card, there was a card, there was a card, there was a number. If you say, let me go, 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 let me go. Then, if you say, let me go, 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 let me go. If you were to meet him, have you crossed paths with him since you left the party or were made to leave the party? Uh, no, I just met him once, uh, I think a year ago in the court. Said hello. And that was it? Yeah, what more? Do you feel angry or bitter about those times? No, no, I don't. I, I, I did feel very angry. I felt very bad uh, about what was being done, what was happening, and I felt uh, I, it was bizarre at that moment. Uh, but no, as I said, you know, to, 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 to continue to carry anger about these things is to allow someone else to dictate your life. Mm -hmm. I have so much else to do. 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 Personally, does ideology count for anything in politics. You said that every revolution eventually pragmatism ke or it's it forced there, it's nudged there, it finds itself there. But look at the India alliance. It's not ideology that has necessarily brought all of these parties together because the Shiv Sena, for example, uh, which had a government with the, with the Congress in Maharashtra till the Shiv Sena was split in you know, the rest we know. That is not an ideological alliance, that is a practical alliance. Now, you can argue that, you know, the Uddhav Thakre Shiv Sena gave up or compromised on some of its principles, so all of that. But I ask you this, because you talk about it. Ideologically, you would have been an anti-Congress thinker. Am I right in saying that? Or you would disappointed with the Congress? W would you call yourself a con erstwhile Congress critic? Not erstwhile. I've been a Congress, a Congress critic, critic very, very strongly. But what is I mean, what does ideology have to do with Ideology is not anti-Congress, pro-Congress. Ideology has to do with some principles, some... So let me try and reframe my question. Yeah. I have been a journalist long enough to remember conversations with you yeah. where you have been extremely critical of the Congress. At one point saying, if if we have to have an alternative to Modi, India has to have an alternative, the Congress must die. Something happened that changed your mind. Was that something, pragmatism, keep, keep your eye on the larger goal? Or did you actually find your mind and your heart persuaded to think otherwise? Well, there are two things. One is ideology, the other is as political judgment. Okay. Uh, ideology is a larger thing. Ideology is, uh, and if someone were to ask me my ideology, 
यू कैन से वट्स माई आइडियोलॉजिकल ओरिजन्स ओरिजन्स आर क्वाइट जो इंडिया में जाति और गोत्र होता है ना सो माई जाति इज सोशलिस्ट गोत्र इज लोहियाइट that's origins well, but that, you're not and, and therefore they have always been anti congress at least yeah. at the level of state politics uh, the, the only question is how 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 much you want your jati and go through to determine your life okay you know, normally all of us don't allow that to happen and so do i okay that's my origins what's my ideological commitment all i would say i have i can give a long speech on that but i'd simply say the preamble to the constitution of india is my idea it's just that i take every word very very seriously mm-hmm. it talks about uh, democracy it talks about secularism about socialism about freedom about equality about fraternity uh these ideologies and the fact you know in a manner of speech anyone in the world can say oh i am for all this but we do know that at the moment in today's india the re- the, the the ruling dispensation is opposed to every single one of the things that i have mentioned here mm. so if uh, if you ask me what is the ideology of india coalition i would still say on balance and in a large coalition you can only talk of on balance on balance this coalition is wedded more to the preamble of indian constitution than others mm. about my own change uh my ideology is upset you know if you were to even say even broadly i keep thinking of india's swadharma and india's swadharma so i don't tie myself into this socialism and mm. these things now mm. it's india's swadharma there are two strands that you find in 20th century one is a strand of swaraj of indigenous thinkers the other is a strand of samata of egalitarians of the marxist feminist or bit correct variety and if you were to describe my ideology today my attempt is to see if we can bring these two streams together hmm. it's a samata swaraj <coughs> bringing these two powerful streams together is the future for this country now let's talk about political assessment political judgment my political judgment was that emergency was a disaster for this country uh, we almost lost our democracy but for mrs gandhi's incorrect move mm-hmm. and 1977 i'm a child of 1977 that moment of seeing people on the street celebrating and saying you know when when mark tully said on bbc that indira gandhi is trailing in raibareli yeah and the crowd exploded in my small town Yes. I saw democracy with my own eyes. That yeah. was democracy. Yeah. Do I regret it? Not one bit. That is my foundation. When I was growing up, I saw this was again Congress regime. Uh in 1984, I happened to be in Delhi that day, though I was in Chandigarh otherwise. One of the most shameful chapters of our history, national history. uh and uh, do i blame congress for these things yes i blamed it yes i was uh, uh very staunchly because do remember that at least till 1989 barring the tiny episode from 77 to 79 congress was the establishment and we were by instinct anti establishment so being anti establishment was being anti congress yes of course we were then came various kinds of experiments and i was naturally more sympathetic to the janata dal and social justice experiments and you know what happened to them uh and as you correctly reminded you know bringing and that's what therefore in when i entered public life i went to this movement not to any of the established political parties which i had known and i had some yeah. invitations to join manmohan singh yeah. some of them but that's not my life after 2014 the situation changes radically in this country the power balance changes completely differently and if you continue to imagine that congress is the establishment of the country post 2014 against which we have to fight you're living in a make believe world even then i was angry with congress as you correctly remind me Yes. Uh, 2019 when they lost the way they lost I was so angry. Um and I said that 
Uh, and what, but 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 do do remember what the anger was? I said, this is this is an election where the fate of this country is being decided, where democracy and constitutional values are being settled, and uh, you do not even put up a good fight in this election. What good are you? You know what is the point of having a big political party? You know I don't need big political parties for ethics that I can get from Kishan Patnaik. Mm -hmm. These big political parties are to provide big footprint and to work as bulwark when it's needed. And when it was needed, you didn't do that. That was the anger. 2022, BJP continues. They have won the Pradesh. Everyone thinks K24 is a done deal. Now let's talk about 2029. Mm -hmm. And I feel this is the end of the country as I've known it. Mm. And something needs to be done. And I see the same Congress, uh, which I had said all these things about, as the only big possibility, which was willing to do something. So two things changed. One, my sense of urgency, my sense of my willingness to connect to anyone who was there to oppose this regime. And I'm saying it here. If Aam Aadmi Party is part of India coalition today, I will support Aam Aadmi Party. If I can go to that extent, notwithstanding whatever I've felt, because you don't run your life on your personal emotions and your past experiences. Mm -hmm. You look for ahead. That's one thing that changed. And number two, in 2022, I saw a Congress which was now willing to take them on. And if these two things happen, why not? Political you, judgment, my political assessment changed because the situation changed. And I saw something different. You, you uh, used a very interesting phrase for Rahul Gandhi after the Bharat Jodo Yatra. Uh, and you said it to me as well. You said you thought Rahul Gandhi had finally earned his inheritance. As you got to know him, there are many impressions of Rahul Gandhi in the media, good, bad, indifferent, ugly. If you were to tell people about him today, maybe persuade your other Loyayite friends, give him a chance. What would you say? What would you, with more information or with new facts, as you call them, what would you say about him? No, first of all, I should uh, say that actually I had known Rahul even earlier. I had known Rahul before that. For almost two years, I had met him at least 20 times. All which is reported in Wikipedia as he was advisor to Rahul Gandhi, right. nothing, nothing of that sort. But I had no I had sort of uh, related to him. And uh, my impression then was that he was uh, very sincere. This uh, is back then. Back then. Mm. And that he was more intelligent than people thought he is. And Barkha, these are two things that I have written in that article where I say Congress must die. Yes. I and I that. say... Rahul is more sincere than any politician I've met and he's more intelligent than people think he is. But I said, what good is all this You know, if you can't even do this? So what have I discovered now in the last one year of relating to him? Uh, sincerity, that of course is there. Nothing has changed. Uh, the good thing is that he, he cannot pretend. He cannot do theater. Uh, etc. That stuff that happens in politics. No, he's not that. He's a very straightforward person. Hanji, ho sakta hai, ye nahi ho sakta. I disagree with you. I just, which very few politicians do. Mm. So it's straightforward. Intelligence, as I've said earlier, you know, uh, he understands policy, is smart, and I don't know how this Papu image came to be pasted. You know, he says, say he he reads, he thinks, and so on. What I discovered in you are the following. One is that uh, I wasn't sure how much of his values have been transformed in the last 10 years. And actually, it's been a pleasant surprise for me to see that uh, on uh, three core issues that matter to me, yeah. uh, his convictions are very deep. I don't know of many politicians who have deep convictions like this. One is secularism. He thinks like a Nehruvian. He is still a very deep Nehruvian on secularism. Election hard jayenge, koi baat nahi, ye nahi karenge. On caste, not many people know. People have just started noticing it now because of what he's saying on caste census and so on. 
but he is almost an abedkarite in thinking about caste, mm. very strongly so. And on economy, you know, people now notice the Adani question. But uh, his own convictions on economic equality, I mean, he's not a Marxist. Mm. But in that broad sense, his convictions are very strongly egalitarian. So that's one thing that I've discovered, his convictions. He's a man of conviction. Second thing which I had not noticed then is that there is a spiritual streak in him. Deep, you know, so when he says Shunya and so on, then these are probably things you shouldn't say in press conferences. No one makes sense of what you're saying. But there's a deep spiritual streak and it's actually very Indian spiritual streak, in many ways very Hindu spiritual streak, mm. uh, where there's a detachment from power, detachment from things as are happening to you. You are almost watching yourself as a fly on the wall. Uh, that is amazing for someone who is in politics. Two, two, two questions there. Uh, one is I am reminded of a time when Randeep Surjewala's I think it was Surjewala who spoke about Rahul Gandhi being a Janyudhari Brahmin. Mm -hmm. uh, there is also a cynicism that these iconography built ki ja rahi hai. This is to try and counter the sort of muditva uh, of our times. So these were my two questions when you say that the thought is close to you. I'm sure the Janyudhari comment made you uncomfortable. Maybe it was a real yeah, politic I moment. Can't, I still can't understand what that moment was yeah, about. Uh, it's, the it's Rahul really that I have known, uh, I mean, did someone manage to persuade, prevail upon him that morning to say, to kari do boss, etc. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, we uh -huh. do all kinds of things. But that's completely out of sync with what the person I've known. Hmm. Uh, about going to temples, no, that's not a problem at all because he actually, I mean, as I said, you're saying that's his belief. That's his belief. Uh, uh, and he would happily go to a mosque and to a Gurdwara because he's actually in that sense Sarabdhara Samabhav with genuine respect. So he thinks of Shiva, he thinks of uh, our mythologies and yeah. so on. And I dare say he's probably more educated about Hinduism than most of these BJP leaders. But the pursuit of power where you said that there's an essential kind of detachment. I'm reminded of a time when a younger Rahul Gandhi, I think it was he was going to be the vice president of the Congress party and he spoke about a conversation he had with his mother where he described power to be like poison. Now there has been a sense of Rahul Gandhi, maybe not today, but let's say till just before the Bharat Jodo Yatra, ki this is not a person committed to the pursuit of power. So, okay, you're smart, you're well-read, you have a thinking mind, you have views on policy, you have views on foreign policy, but you have to change the success of the Rajneeti with success. How do you change it? Do you still believe that he is a reluctant, not a full-time politician? This is a criticism of the time. You see, there's a difference. I mean, it's a very interesting question. There's a difference between being power-hungry hmm and having a will to power. These are two different things. Uh, being power hungry actually makes you smaller in politics. And uh, you know you make all kinds of compromises, the usual stuff of politics to get played. But a complete detachment from power mm. is not a very good thing. It's actually ethically not a very good thing. Mm. You know, uh, what you need, especially if you are in public life, even if you are not in public life, every human being should claim certain bit of power, uh, which is That's right. you know, yeah. for, to, to live in a dignified, don't hate you, huh? dignified life. Uh, you know, you need that. And if you are in public life, if you are in the business of mobilizing people, driving them towards something, then you must have that will to power for that purpose, not for myself. Right. So while Rahul has sufficient detachment of the first kind, does he have sufficient drive of the second kind is something which is still to be seen. I can't claim to be that kind of a buddy who, you know, who yeah. knows him from within. Yeah. Uh, but that's something that I'm waiting to see. OK, I want to talk in the end. We have a few minutes left about the farmers movement, which you were so closely associated with. It was a um, a movement that did manage to make a very powerful uh, government that doesn't usually change its mind, change its mind, or at least put a pause on the farm, new farm legislations. However, it was not a movement without contention, controversy. And when you look back at it today, do you think you would do some things differently when you look at a deep Siddhu 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल आपने बाद में कहा कि आई थिंक आपने कहा कि प्लीज करेक्ट मी फाइम रॉन्ग कि ये यू फेल ही वॉज एन इन्फिल्ट्रेटर ऑलमोस्ट ऑन दी अदर साइड बट I remember when I first interviewed him and I knew nothing about him and he was saying completely crazy strange extremist pro Khalistan sort of things and I remember saying to everybody I knew at that time associated with the farmers movement ki you should weed this guy out because he is trouble aur us samay jab humne ye bola tha wo bola ki are aap to ye to sarkar ke behalf pe aap bol rahi hain is tarah ki because we live in such a polarized time log kuch bhi kehte hain that's it's not about me when you look back at it Do you think you could should have done something differently? Any learnings from that movement? But uh, of course, enormous learnings, and there is no movement without controversies and so on. On Deep Sindhu, uh, he's no more, so I should yes. speak with some restraint. Uh, I think you may be factually mistaken. Okay. Uh, the leadership of the Kisan movement never entertained Deep Sindhu for one minute. We knew about his presence from day one. In fact, not even day one. Day minus four months. because he had invited me personally to come to a morcha that they were doing 3 4 months before the 2 months before the kisan morcha was to happen i said yes i will come then i checked with my friends they tell me told me what are you doing then i called and said sorry i didn't know enough about you i will not be able to come uh and so so we knew before the farmers movement began and at no stage whatsoever uh, was the farmer movement leadership complicit with in league with in fact what had happened no i meant out of on, ignorance maybe uh, or on, on 20, not, no 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 what happened on 25th january night just before the 26th when he goes and puts the siddhu actually captured the stage against the so so what we were doing on 25th night yeah. was how to recapture the stage from deep siddhu's men so the possibility that we were involved in that you could say he outsmarted us on 26th or not outsmarted us outsmarted delhi police mm. or was he allowed to we don't know the real full picture needs to come you know it would you would be hard to put uh, to find a photograph of deep siddhu with the entire farmers leadership but i can find his picture of him with the home minister of the country so we don't know what happened Uh, but is this during on, uh, the campaign? In, he was associated with the BJP election campaign. At that's one right. Point. That's right. So, so I haven't seen the one with the Home uh, Minister, but no, I assume you mean during yeah, an election campaign. Exactly. Yes. The, no, you know, in fact, the, the picture that I remember is clearly from his office, not from some big rally or some such. Thing. Mm. So the uh, so that's factually uh, uh, something happened on twenty sixth January, which was not correct. uh because we allowed uh that which is say when the crowd came uh we could not ensure that none of them went towards the red fort the delhi police failed and one of the reasons is and it should be put on record because we had made a request to delhi police in the week in the run up to this give us 2 kilometers on the ring road in our route and we'll go back they said ring road nahi denge and so on and men in the farmers movement it became a prestige point ke ring road pe to ek bar jana hai uh and i spoke till the last day i spoke to police officers to say 2 km hame jaane dijiye kyunki hamare jatiyon ki ichha hai ki jana hai if that was allowed i believe we would have been in a better shape but then once people broke loose and went on to the ring road which was not on the scheduled route then they could go anywhere and uh, the ease with which they entered red fort is something which the country should examine and see it's not farmers movement leadership which was taking them inside the red fort who was taking them inside the red fort and why is it if that after such a major violation no deep public inquiry has taken place nothing has been put in the public domain and no case has been launched something is amiss isn't it So lots I think that but, but lots from of farmers movement yes lot of learnings but what an amazing movement uh, and when anyone one lesson anyone who's fought this regime in a determined way has won final question to you you spoke in the beginning of how your father taught you कि जब डिबेट भी करते हैं तो अगर दूसरी साइड की तरफ से कुछ ठीक लगता है कि उन्होंने ये ठीक किया तो पहले वो भी एक्नॉलेज करके फिर क्रिटिसाइज करो 
So borrowing from that, I will ask you, are there any points that you would concede to the BJP, to the Modi government that they've got right? Well, RSS BJP, I always say that uh, it is a sense of self-respect and pride in our culture, which has gone haywire, you know, or easily uh, if the government is paying more attention to Indian languages, I'm all for it. And I have defended this government's uh, in writing. I have said this part of the new education policy must not be attacked. Mm -hmm. Paying attention to Indian languages and to mother tongues of this country is a very good idea, must be supported. Whenever they do anything which genuinely promotes this civilization, cultural heritage, I'm all for it. The difficulty is that in today's situation, you know, in normal politics, you say, ye bhi hai, ye bura hai. but when your entire heritage is being used in a way which is destructive of your civilization, then it's not a time for ifs and buts. Then it's a time to stand up and be counted. Today, my India's Swadharma, Bharat ka Swadharma, that is under assault. And the assault is coming not from these deracinated English-speaking intellectuals. They, they don't come for much in this country. Mm. The assault is coming from those who occupy constitutional offices. And therefore, today, I cannot say I would put half my energy in criticizing this, half my energy in criticizing that. That would be utterly irresponsible. To stand up to power and to stand up for principles is your duty. And today, when my... My, my deep swadharma is being violated when my country is being reduced to things that our generations would cringe, would regret, would repent. It is my duty to stand up and say, no, this is not what India is like. This is not my culture. This is not my religion. This is not my civilization. This is not our path. It's a great country. We can be much better than we are. But this is not the road to take. I do not want, I don't know Barkha if it will succeed or fail or whatever. It doesn't matter. 20 years later, 50 years later, my father, my father, I don't know if it will or not. But the next generation will read a book, read a book, read a book, read a book, and they will say, yes, this man was house time. That's what I want. Thank you, Yugendra Adhati, for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you.